are folks, it's a fabulous day, it's Friday afternoon and we're in Cavan and uh, who did I see out on his canvassing trail? Only the brilliant Luke Ming Flanagan. Luke, I know you're busy and you're canvassing and it's a great day to be doing it. Okay, so just quickly, quick cough questions. Yeah, your last four years in, in uh, Europe, what did you think of it? Uh, do you it, feel satisfied? Do you feel the need to go again? What's the story? I do, um, uh, I, when I originally got elected out there, uh, like anyone in a new job, I didn't know my proverbial from my elbow, but uh, the best way to learn in this job is basically just to dive in and discover what it's about. I suppose it took me about two years to get up to speed on it and work out what my priorities were. And uh, the two big priorities that I've been working on, one is uh, to uh, stop the militarization of the European Union. Uh, we have, in the last couple of years, signed up to PESCO, which potentially could cost us €4 billion Euros extra year in security and defence spending. That's a big number, but in real terms that means building 20,000 houses, but our government has decided to go down the road of, at a time when we have peace on this island, spending that much money on making us more secure and to defend ourselves. The other big issue is the whole area of how we produce our food and the common agricultural policy and the money that that brings into local towns and villages. And a big thing I was trying to do was to make sure that farmers would all end up getting equal sized payments. And I had an amendment passed two weeks ago at the uh, Agriculture and Rural Development Development Committee, which will mean that this region uh, uh, will end up getting between 150 million and a quarter of a billion euros more money. It will end up coming from uh, the south of the country and coming from the Dublin constituency, but it will have a positive effect here. And some people would say, well, I don't live on a farm, it won't impact on me. Remember, when farmers have more money, it means they have more money to go out and use the hairdresser, more money to go to the mechanic, maybe get a new door home, new windows, etc. And it's more money all around. So those are the two things I've been working and on. And fair play to you, Ming. To be fair to you, I've been watching some of your broad some of your, your, your podcasts from, yes. from the EU, and that's exactly what you've been doing. You've been commenting on that, and that's great. Now... Regards as to new politics, um, I've been watching not the mainstream media, I've been watching like kind of like other stuff that's going on. Are you keeping your finger on the pulse of that? There's a lot of disconcertation in Ireland. There's a lot of people fed up with mainstream politics, as they yes. are with the mainstream media. Are you keeping your finger on that? Are you watching that? Well, I am indeed. You saw what happened in Roscommon as well. In yeah, I did. I mean, uh, one of the biggest problems, uh, we have, like it's uh, Easter weekend, and uh, there will be celebrations all around the country about what the men and women of 1916 died for. And it's quite clear they didn't die uh, to leave us with the country where vulture funds were more important family homes uh, they definitely there's a lot of EU, EU infiltration into our into our into our lifestyle and our customs as well do you feel that yeah there is in there is in certain people are beginning to wake up and say well we, we don't really want to go down that we don't we want to walk down a cavern sorry an Irish street and we want to recognize it as a street as as cavern as Ireland yeah well uh, we're losing it, that well I, I think uh, one of the pro one I hand we're gaining one on one hand we're gaining and another hand we're losing our identity. You could say slowly, but a gradual, but it, it can be happening. Well, look at you. You've got to ask what the Irish identity is in the first place. Was it the fair bullocks who came here originally? Was it the Normans? No, somewhere, was somewhere, it the English or <laughs> somewhere in between. And uh, look at uh, I always think it's a good idea if you have a melting pot and it creates a better society. Um, I have I come from a family where seven out of the eight of us uh, had to work in London and were openly welcomed. I also uh, I'm married to a woman where uh, she has uh, uh, nine siblings. All ten of them and both her parents went to work in London, and uh, basically uh, it worked well for them. So I think it's actually good news that maybe people want to come to this country because uh, for so long. Uh, people had to leave so it's good to see people coming so you don't feel that there's a threat of us being over that there's a threat of an underlying racism going on in Ireland oh yeah reading there, between the lines yeah there is you know how serious now how that, that's the question how serious do you think it is I think uh, there's a uh, racism in absolutely every country I, I don't think it's necessarily any worse in Ireland uh, than it is anywhere else but it's always something that you have to keep an eye on and uh, basically at the end of the day uh, that should be stopped at every turn because uh, it doesn't bring anything good to anyone. So well done. So you're looking forward maybe to getting to being re-elected and another four years in Europe. Well, now, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully good stuff. Now, um, what further can you, you've brought good stuff to the table. What further can you bring to the table? Well, uh, 
uh, we have one of the big things in the new parliament will be deciding uh, how we spend our budget and it's back again to whether uh, Europe is about feeding people or whether it's about fighting and becoming a military complex. That is going to be the big issue next time around. Obviously Brexit is a big issue but from the point of view of what an MEP can do to stop that or to improve uh, how that situation ends up. Really, it is relatively limited in comparison to what we can actually do in the Parliament when it comes to deciding how the money is spent. So that's something I'd be concentrating on if I got back. OK, well done. No doubt you will do your best on that. Luke Ming Flanagan, thank you very much for talking to us on Cavan TV.